July 21st Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible Psalms chapter 77 and 78 from the Old Testament I will cry out to God and call for help. I will cry out to God and He will pay attention to me. In my time of trouble I sought the Lord. I kept my hand raised in prayer throughout the night. I refused to be comforted. I said, I will remember God while I groan. I will think about him while my strength leaves me. Selah. He held my eyelids open. I was troubled and could not speak. I thought about the days of old, about ancient times. I said, during the night I will remember the song I once sang. I will think very carefully. I tried to make sense of what was happening. I asked, will the Lord reject me forever? Will he never again show me his favor? Has his loyal love disappeared forever? Has his promise failed forever? Has God forgotten to be merciful? Has his anger stifled his compassion? Then I said, I am sickened by the thought that the Sovereign One might become inactive. I will remember the works of the Lord. Yes, I will remember the amazing things you did long ago. I will think about all you have done. I will reflect upon your deeds. O oh God, your deeds are extraordinary. What God can compare to our great God? You are the God who does amazing things. You have revealed your strength among the nations. You delivered your people by your strength, the children of Jacob and Joseph. Selah. The waters saw you, O oh God. The waters saw you and trembled. Yes, the depths of the sea shook with fear. The clouds poured down rain. The skies thundered. Yes, your arrows flashed about. Your thunderous voice was heard in the wind. The lightning bolts lit up the world. The earth trembled and shook. You walked through the sea. You passed through the surging waters, but left no footprints. You led your people like a flock of sheep by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Pay attention, my people, to my instruction. Listen to the words I speak. I will sing a song that imparts wisdom. I will make insightful observations about the past, what we have heard and learned, that which our ancestors have told us. We will not hide from their descendants. We will tell the next generation about the Lord's praiseworthy acts, about his strength and the amazing things he has done. He established a rule in Jacob. He set up a law in Israel. He commanded our ancestors to make his deeds known to their descendants so that the next generation, children yet to be born, might know about them. They will grow up and tell their descendants about them. Then they will place their confidence in God. They will not forget the works of God and they will obey his commands. Then they will not be like their ancestors who were a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that was not committed and faithful to God. The Ephraimites were armed with bows, but they retreated in the day of battle. They did not keep their covenant with God, and they refused to obey his law. They forgot what he had done, the amazing things he had shown them. He did amazing things in the sight of their ancestors in the land of Egypt, in the region of Zoan. He divided the sea and led them across it. He made the water stand in a heap. He led them with a cloud by day and with the light of a fire all night long. He broke open rocks in the wilderness and gave them enough water to fill the depths of the sea. He caused streams to flow from the rock and made the water flow like rivers. Yet they continued to sin against him and rebelled against the sovereign one in the desert. They willfully challenged God by asking for food to satisfy their appetite. They insulted God, saying, Is God really able to give us food in the wilderness? Yes, he struck a rock and water flowed out. Streams gushed forth. But can he also give us food? Will he provide meat for his people? When the Lord heard this, he was furious. A fire broke out against Jacob, and his anger flared up against Israel, because they did not have faith in God and did not trust his ability to deliver them. He gave a command to the clouds above and opened the doors in the sky. He rained down manna for them to eat, and he gave them the grain of heaven. Man ate the food of the mighty ones. He sent them more than enough to eat. He brought the east wind through the sky and by his strength led forth the south wind. 
He rained down meat on them like dust, birds as numerous as the sand on the seashores. He caused them to fall right in the middle of their camp, all around their homes. They ate until they were stuffed. He gave them what they desired. They were not yet filled up. Their food was still in their mouths. When the anger of God flared up against them, he killed some of the strongest of them. He brought the young men of Israel to their knees. Despite all this, they continued to sin and did not trust him to do amazing things. So he caused them to die unsatisfied and filled with terror. When he struck them down, they sought his favor. They turned back and longed for God. They remembered that God was their protector and that the sovereign God was their deliverer. But they deceived him with their words and lied to him. They were not really committed to him and they were unfaithful to his covenant. Yet he is compassionate. He forgives sin and does not destroy. He often holds back his anger and does not stir up his fury. He remembered that they were made of flesh and were like a wind that blows past and does not return. How often they rebelled against him in the wilderness and insulted him in the desert. They again challenged God and offended the Holy One of Israel. They did not remember what he had done, how he delivered them from the enemy when he performed his awesome deeds in Egypt and his acts of judgment in the region of Zoan. He turned their rivers into blood and they could not drink from their streams. He sent swarms of biting insects against them as well as frogs that overran their land. He gave their crops to the grasshopper, the fruit of their labor to the locust. He destroyed their vines with hail and their sycamore fig trees with driving rain. He rained hail down on their cattle and hurled lightning bolts down on their livestock. His raging anger lashed out against them. He sent fury, rage, and trouble as messengers who bring disaster. He sent his anger in full force. He did not spare them from death. He handed their lives over to destruction. He struck down all the firstborn in Egypt, the first fruits of their reproductive power in the tents of Ham. Yet he brought out his people like sheep. He led them through the wilderness like a flock. He guided them safely along while the sea covered their enemies. He brought them to the border of his holy land, to this mountainous land which his right hand acquired. He drove the nations out from before them. He assigned them their tribal allotments and allowed the tribes of Israel to settle down. Yet they challenged and defied the sovereign God and did not obey his commands. They were unfaithful and acted as treacherously as their ancestors. They were as unreliable as a malfunctioning bow. They made him angry with their pagan shrines and made him jealous with their idols. God heard and was angry. He completely rejected Israel. He abandoned the sanctuary at Shiloh, the tent where he lived among men. He allowed the symbol of his strong presence to be captured. He gave the symbol of his splendor into the hand of the enemy. He delivered his people over the sword and was angry with his chosen nation. Fire consumed their young men and their virgins remained unmarried. Their priests fell by the sword, but their widows did not weep. But then the Lord awoke from his sleep. He was like a warrior in a drunken rage. He drove his enemies back. He made them a permanent target for insults. He rejected the tent of Joseph. He did not choose the tribe of Ephraim. He chose the tribe of Judah and Mount Zion, which he loves. He made his sanctuary as enduring as the heavens above, as secure as the earth, which he established permanently. He chose David, his servant, and took him from the sheepfolds. He took him away from following the mother sheep and made him the shepherd of Jacob, his people, and of Israel, his chosen nation. David cared for them with pure motives. He led them with skill. God, throughout this psalm, uh, the second one, you keep showing how you very clearly were the God of Israel, that you were very clearly the God, <laughs> that you were very clearly through signs and miracles and discipline and love and grace and mercy, you showed them over and over again who you were. And yet they rejected you, they chose other gods, they chose to be disobedient, they chose sin. 
And I just think that you are so crystal clear in our lives. Even if you didn't do a single thing, just looking around at this amazing kingdom you have built. I can't imagine anybody not just instantly on their knees turning to you and thanking you and praising you. God, I ask today that you look inside our hearts. Please look inside my heart and everyone who's listening to this video today. And seek out those things that we are missing. That as we see your hand in so many things, we see these amazing miracles and these incredible blessings. And yet we still choose to sin and we still choose to do things over you. That you search our hearts and you show us how we make those mistakes, how we get on those wrong tracks, how we decide to put what we want as way more important than what you want for us. God, the root of almost everything that we do that is sinful is simply ego. That we want something more than we want to please you. That we think we know our lives better than you do. That we are so insistent upon getting our own way that we're willing to sin in order to do that. God, I just ask that you make those areas of our life so crystal clear. And then when you do that, that we respond to that. That you give us the strength, the desire to please you, to respond to those areas of sin that you show us. God, I mess up every day. And for that, I'm truly sorry and truly repentant. I want so much. <laughs> I want so much to follow the path that you have set before me. Yet every day I make these mistakes and I would kind of like to tomorrow make them less and the next day a little bit less and a little bit less. But the only way I can do that, God, is through your strength, through you changing how I see the world, by you changing my heart and how it feels for the rest of the world. God, do whatever you need to do to my life, to my heart, to my way of living to make me walk in your will, to give me the life that you created me for, to glorify you. God, I thank you for your insistence and your desire and your love to have a relationship with me. And not only have a relationship, but you love me beyond anything I can even imagine to, to offer me just an amazing, incredible life lived for you. God, allow me to accept that life. Allow me to live that life for you, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.